Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at a Summit Haven deck. This one's a little more interesting. It's definitely got more kind of um, counters and board control-y sort of stuff in it, which I thought was a little interesting. It's also housing a single Zeus for just that extra little bit of Storm Edge you might need to win a game. And it's not running any kind of Igus package, which I thought was reasonably interesting. So why not give it a go? I mean, it's not going to hurt. And showing off some interesting decks is what I like to do for you guys. So. The red brands are really cool, they really do help in blocking out some potential damage, especially in the big dragon matches, which can be quite big swings, so they work out quite nicely. Otherwise, everything else is more tailored towards ending up in a control kind of state, where every single card that you can play will usually remove another card from your opponent's board, so or from their hand in this case. Works out really nicely, so we'll get right into it and take a look. So the first matchup I've got here is Portal. Portal and Haven are usually a reasonably close matchup. Every single time I have played as Portal or Haven in this matchup, it's I always been extremely down to the wire, like, so close. Usually one top deck can literally change the outcome of any battle in this matchup. So it's absolutely crazy time. But I've gone in expecting some rushes, so being able to take advantage of Snow White and hopefully Gemstone and Black Inscriptures now are kind of important. Being able to remove things consistently while putting out threats is always a good, good way to go. Being able to just throw the gemstone, take a couple of damage. Unfortunately, that was set up a little bit with this Hamlin. Not that I had too many options in that regard. I could have played the Snow White, but it would have lost out. Playing the Black Inscription only would have left me in the, about the same spot. At least this way, I can use the Snow White and attempt Summit Temple same turn. We've got the gemstone being proc next turn, and we'll have access to our black inscription as well, so removal of most stuff here should be fine. If we can actually draw a priest of the cudgel, we could actually remove almost the entire board, but that's got to be down to the top deck luck. So I honestly wouldn't have been surprised if Hamlet had went for a trade, but they obviously don't really decide to do that. They just go face to it, which personally is completely fine. So we don't quite get the luck that I wanted, but we get pretty close. I mean, we've got some okay cards. Pure Heart of Singer is good enough. At least it does allow us to draw, and with the Evolve, we can remove at least three things from this board anyway. Even though I could have went, say, Black and Scripture into uh, probably nothing, actually, because, I mean, we already had the Happy Pig. Summit draw, so we would have already spent a point. So really, I think this was the better way to go with this play. Leaving up the 2 1 is okay. Did you Especially since they did trade. Ready to play Much rather have a trade than no trade. And Kakan and Nia is fine. I mean, we're not really aiming to stick things right this second. We're mainly aiming to pull ourselves into the mid game with a decent hand. Which Happy Pig and Pure Hearted let us do pretty nicely. Although, we do need to spend another Evolve if we want to remove this, with Happy Pig at least giving us 3 health for its Evolve, which is nice. So they do only have 4 cards, and luckily we haven't seen a Desex there, which would have been really difficult to deal with immediately, just because of what we have. We do have 3 Black Inscriptures and 2 Beacons, which means we've got enough removal. Now it's really just a matter of setting up our boards to hopefully block out any kind of big burst. Which is what I expect from stuff like the Rush Artifacts. Neither human nor beast. So, Sphira comes down. Ow. Obviously trying to put that early pressure on us. And I do take advantage of the 9 damage Heavenly Knight, so we have 10 damage total for this turn, which is extremely solid, considering the amount of removal we have next turn. The heaven shall lay waste to you. And it also blocks out the Sphira, which is pretty reasonable. I mean, you can't go wrong blocking that out. Genius. So the Icarus gets to come down, not really doing too much I guess, pulling a single artifact won't be enough on its own, they really need to be able to put more artifacts out, but Excel should help with that. So it looks like they will get enough to remove this 9-9 without having to use the Sphera, depending on which path they go down, which looks like they are going to use the ancient artifacts. Which, in a way, is actually pretty reasonable for me. 
Justice can never of course, if I did top deck another Heavenly Knight, we would be very close to lethal, but unfortunately we don't did get that. So now it's just a matter of controlling this board state as we go. So I decide to actually hold the second globe because I don't want to overstack the board yet, especially knowing what I've got. Although I do decide to actually end up playing it towards the end of the turn. I was really debating, it was such a hard choice to make to play the globe or not play the globe in this turn. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to stack the board or whether I wanted to understack the board. Just really couldn't decide at that point. Oh, this does a small but this trade being extremely important. So we get one damage to the face, which helps us get a little bit closer to what we need. And Happy Pig really means they can't do too much. With two cards in hand and Acceleradium about to proc, it looks like the Portal player has just kind of given up at this stage. We only need three damage to actually win. Yeah, so at this point I think the Portal player had just given up. They obviously didn't have enough to really push this which meant we could easily just kind of roll them, and the Zooster off the top just closed it that little bit earlier. I am the father, the god of all. Even a Saphira here wouldn't have been enough damage. They hadn't sacrificed enough, for, uh, enough artifacts to really do it. Alright, and our next match is Rune, and a Daria Rune at that, so... Daria runes are still reasonably popular, know? not the most Tradition common matchup on ladder. I still think that I'm seeing a lot of variation, especially in the rotation format. A lot of people disagree, but that's what opinions are for. They're to disagree with each other pretty much. I think in the whole time I've been making these videos the last week, I've bought a handful of Daria at most, which isn't too bad. I've actually struggled more with Dirt Rune matchups than Daria matchups a lot of the time, so... Interesting facts, let's go. Snow White seems like it's going to be optimal this play. I mean, it sets up pretty early on. Locks out a lot of what Rune can do in their early game. So, Laboratory, no real issue with that. But we don't really have anything to counter it either, which is kind of disappointing. Would have been nice if we had something decent to go against that. Now it's just a matter of what do we see from them. So insight, so they do have a fairly decent hand, especially with the mysterious missile they got. And now our hand moves forward just ever so slightly. So I decide to go for the Summit Temple into the Pure Hearted, it sets up my draw and sets up my Summit Temple reasonably early, which I should be able to take pretty good advantage of. And it creates a natural counter to this 2-1. Of course, I get a little lucky with that Golem Assault and being able to pull it off effectively to really ramp the damage up. But both of those are going to be very quickly removed by my Priest of the Cudgel next turn, so Taking that little bit of damage right now is actually pretty reasonable. Actually, sorry, March has Teton. A little bit better way to remove these, just because I do get to set up the amulet and set up the Tin Soldier. I was actually originally thinking Priest, but I think using the value is just a little bit better. Especially since setting up 5 damage is really good. Because obviously, Tin Soldier is not affected by Summit Temple. Same South Zeus isn't affected by Summit Temple. So we see the Magic Owl, they did decide to go for the Evolve, and luckily for them they used to have Wind Blast, which always seems to be the case. Did you like it? But not too big a concern for us. I mean, the Judge of Retribution is perfect counter to this, and finally gets to see some play. I usually I find it hard to slot into a nice spot on board, but when you can get it off on 6 as removal and set up a 3-5, it always feels really, really good. Chimera though does counter it naturally. I would have liked to have seen multiple Chimeras because then I could have used Pure Annihilation on them and it would have actually been reasonably decent. With a bang and, a broom. and there is their first Daria. So it looks like they are going for a big swing Daria which is going to be pretty impactful to this board at the moment. 
considering I have nothing set up as a counter, and I'm relying purely on what I have in hand to counter. And if I don't remove at least two things here, I'm going to struggle really hard. So unfortunately, I don't quite get a decent hand. I can use the Happy Pig, which will both heal me and remove this 4-4, which worked out nicely, but... We do have to leave the 5-5 Daria up and risk going down to 8. So it's only back-to-back -back Darius that would really be a problem. Alright, there's the Golden Salts. So from this hand, Black and Scripture and Tribunal are perfect. We can remove two things and set up a... Princess Snow White pretty effectively. So we don't need to worry about too much at all. No! A single ping isn't going to be enough to really deter us, and they did draw into Circle, which isn't the strongest of the cards they could get out of that, for sure. And we actually are going to proc our... There's tea time next, so that's really good. Especially since I can play another judge, which, like I said, when you get judge down to clear a board out like this, it's the only good time to play it. We do get to ping a couple of damage. So from this point on the board, even another Daria turn is going to be hard for them to actually deal with all this. So we're actually in a pretty reliable spot. The only real risk is that they would be running a Chimera top end with their giant Chimera top end, which could deal a potential lethal. But from where we are right now, with Grimnir, we can actually clear this out completely and get some really nice damage. My Plus, Tribunal is a natural you. counter to anything they play next turn. So, 7 to the face, doesn't leave them with much. And then we see the Wind Blast. Only for four though, not quite having enough. And the second Daria. So this is how a normal average Daria match goes. Of course high rolling is possible, but it's pretty uncommon. This is the more common situation you'll be in with against this deck. And luckily for us, we can actually go for lethal, or very close to it. We're actually only one off, but that's only because Grimnir is not affected by Summit, which is why I assume they conceded because they're like, really one help, not going to help us. So if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, hit that like button and subscribe. You can find this decklist in the description below, it's definitely an interesting one, and it's been about 50-50 over the course of about 8 games, so that's pretty reasonable. The only couple of games I really lost hard were mainly because I just bricked a hand, I didn't quite have what I needed in that situation. I was basically one card short from being able to turn the game around, and that seems to be the only drawback to this deck, it just lacks that one thing that you might need in a turn to really win the game. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button again, subscribe, of course, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.